I left the corporate world. We now live for less than $300 a month on this acre of land. I feel like I got my life back. I got a chance to retire and I got some time back with my husband that I hadn't had for many years. Hi, my name is Melanie and this is our little house and our miniature garden. So, we're going to go straight to the kitchen in our tiny house. I know a lot of people when we built ours would do them galley style and stick them on the sides. We wanted ours in the front because that way we'd get the most use out of it and it would also be off the main area of the room and I have the window in the middle of the sink which was one of the things I wanted. So I thought, oh, we're definitely building that. But this is a really easy to use space because we can work on both sides of the counter. So, I can cook on one side and he can cook on the other. And we have an induction cooktop so it can move back and forth and we only use small appliances so we don't have the big stove and all that. So it's really easy to move that stuff around the counter. I do a lot of our own cooking, so I'm baking and cooking with very few appliances and I've done that for 6 years and I still don't feel like buying a full-size refrigerator or a full-size stove to do any of that. It all came together pretty easy. I have the main big sink. I have a built-in drying rack so I can pull that out if I want to use the whole sink to soak something and just keep a couple of shelves. It's actually worked out really well because I can't go find a bunch of other stuff to put in here because I only have this little space to do it. If you have the space, you're going to fill it up and I didn't want to fill it up and that's one of the things that I like about it is that we have exactly what we need and it doesn't take a lot of time to clean it up or take care of it. As far as what we're producing on the land, as far as food and what we're producing in the garden, about 30 to 40 percent of what I'm canning for home. My goal is to get about 70 to 80 percent of the production and that's going to take time to condition the soil in the garden. It's not a totally dependent system, but it's better than having nothing and we keep working on it every year to make it better and better. Our stairs also serve as storage in our little house. And this is the one area that we've rebuilt like four times since we were little. So we started with this pantry first and we have our toilet paper, jellies, jams and everything from top to bottom. And this used to be a closet and we turned it into a drawer so I could put all my canning stuff in. Here we moved the whole staircase forward and added the canning rack that holds over 50 jars. We don't have a lot of places for clothes and stuff and all that, but we designed the house to be able to store food. I think of my house as kind of a fluid and how we build it. We can take it apart and rebuild it whenever we want if it doesn't work out in CH. And that's one of the things I like about living small. After we build this, I'm like, oh yeah, we'll take it apart this weekend and put a drawer in it. And we were like, what if we just do it? I had been through six layoffs in seven years and after going through that, for so many years, over and over again, it seemed like every year was a layoff. Every year was a layoff. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm exhausted. I'm stressed out. We're working hard to pay for an apartment that's not our own. We'll never own it. And I just thought, I don't want to live like this anymore. I'm not happy. I can't see my husband and I'm going to work really hard for all these people who frankly don't give a about me doing well or how good a job I do because in a year I'm going to be laid off again. So I left that world, I left the corporate world, I sold everything I owned within three weeks, so this has been a six plus year process to get to where we are now. We now live for less than $300 a month on this one acre of land. We run our own business, so we don't have to worry about downtime and we can work really hard and enjoy what we do and still have time together and be able to be creative and have fun and build all these cool things and learn all these new skills. So, I feel like I got my life back. I had the opportunity to retire and I got some time back with my husband that I hadn't had for many years. This is our main living area and we chose to add hammocks because they can be hung against the wall, 
they can be taken down and we can use the space for other things. We have, you know, an area where we can do yoga. My husband and I can dance if we want, we can play with the dog, we can sit on the floor like it's a very functional space. We had a drop-down table in the main area. This was built out of a piece of live edge that I bought at a local lumber yard. This place. If I turn it around it opens up and becomes a desk so I can sit there and write or read or whatever. Now my husband and I share the spaces in the tiny house but we have another office upstairs so usually that's the one he ends up using most of the time but we switch back and forth so it's not like a specific space. This is all mine, that's all his. It's just whoever needs to use it, uses it. It's very flexible. We opted to have a shower in our tiny house instead of a tub but I didn't want one of those really small showers because my husband is like 6 feet 1 inch and I'm 5 feet 8 inches and that doesn't work for us. So we originally had a regular white wraparound shower here that we took out and ended up putting in this wall, a little seat, and a waterfall shower. So, so, this is a lot more comfortable because in the summer I can have the windows open and I can leave this side open and just let the water fall down while I'm sitting there and relaxing and it's very peaceful because we have the vines and everything in here. So this is a 38 by 38 shower and we have the composting toilet next to it and of course a lot of natural light so it's fun and I highly recommend adding open showers and little half height walls and things like that to tiny houses because it makes the space feel a lot bigger. So the water comes from our well. We have a little well shed that we built outside and we filter the water before it comes into the house. We have an on-demand hot water system that supplies it and we're connected to a septic tank on the property which is required by our state for grey water. This is our custom closet. I think we built it three or four years after we were little. Again we went through several designs before we came up with this one but it worked out really well for us. So here we have cubbies in the walls for regularly used items and then we have a place for all of our laundry. We have a spin washer that's not here and it just sits right above the tub. We originally went with a washer dryer so it has that and a propane washer and dryer so it would be completely off grid. But we never installed one because the spin washers worked so well and we thought why plug it in and use the space. So we've stuck with these little guys and they've done a good job. This is our master bedroom loft and this is one of the reasons we built our house with a 4 grams pitch because it's about 54 centimeters tall. And for someone as tall as us, my husband and I don't want those claustrophobic little lofts. So we have hoper windows on each side which gives us a great breeze at night and the 36 by 36 egress window behind us. This loft has room for a California king bed but right now there's a queen bed in it. We have the wall storage, of course. And this is the only storage we have in here for anything. People always complain that lofts are hot spaces. I think because our mini spits are up here and this space is open and big, we don't have any issues with the heat. So, this is our Ford Texas love seat. We have a little recliner. This kind of folds out and becomes a bed or a lounge where you can hang out and read which is really nice. And when we have the windows open it feels nice. We have a little desk. It has wheels so I can drag the chair around and there's a little side table there that you can pull up and use to put a drink on. This is primarily used as a work loft. So, we have our computer up here, our printer, there's a lot of firewood and this is where we conduct our business. We built the tiny house on wheels in 2018 it was $27,000 in materials to build but we did all the work and built it in 7 days so it was a very quick and intense build. It took 5 of us to do this. We bought our land which is 1.07 acres by 16,000 and what we did was we bought a distressed property. 
So this property had a burned down house and two 10 by 40 mobile homes on it, plus trash and debris and dead animals. It was full of ticks and it was just a horrible mess. But it had a well, septic tank, light pole, driveway and one whole side is a creek and we came in and we've been cleaning this property up for the last four years. Ah, uh, building supplies in the last two years have skyrocketed and to keep all that under control, you know, we've reused and recycled as much as we can from jobs and that's how we've built all these kinds of things. I don't want to say it's the cheapest way because some of the things we've done have been very expensive, but there are ways to build a self-sustaining farm where you can recycle and reuse materials to save a lot of money and still have it look good on your property. So this is our Megidum hot tub, our nude hot tub that we started building this year. So, this is still a work in progress. I have to rip up something like plexiglass or something on the outside and I think this back is going to end up being wood. But this is our hot tub. It's great. Because after working hard all day, we have a place to come and relax and so we have a nice little bench, a couple of towels, some lights and in this whole direction you can see the property so you don't feel like you're locked into a small space. But it's a quick, easy and fairly cheap way to have a makeshift hot tub on your property. And then of course we had to get fancy and put it inside a cup. So yeah, good times. This is the main garden on our property. It's the end of the season so we don't have much to do here right now. But it's been a labor of love because this was all a front yard and we've been turning it into a garden area. So, we had to till all the land and work it for four years to get it to sprout, uh, and eventually we're going to expand it even more. We have an 8 by 6 greenhouse in the back and then we have a little pallet greenhouse that holds our strawberries because they come back every year and along this side we have some really interesting lives. So we have a fantastic little trail that goes around it and it provides us with a lot of food. We had a really bad drought this summer so it was a really frustrating year for gardening and a lot of us lost a lot of our crops so we've just been holding on as best we can. We've still gotten a good amount in, but nowhere near what we got last year so it's a little different every year. This is one of the areas that we added this year. It took us a while to get to this part because part of the old burned down house had destroyed a lot of the land here so we had to work with all this concrete and stuff to rebuild it. But yeah, eventually this area is going to provide a lot of herbs for the little farm. This is one of the new areas that we've been working on and what we did was we used an old shelter structure, like those storage units that had been destroyed a couple of years before, uh, and so we took the frame and built the wood roof over it and then we made a recess here for a sink and a drain board and I've got a propane stove back here. Because we do a lot of canning, it gets pretty hot in the little house with pressure canners and stuff. So, it's nice to be able to can here and have a space to wash everything and clean it. And you know, if we lose power or we lose electricity, if the power goes out, then it's already our backup kitchen area. So it's our Hobbit house root vendor and on our farm we use it to just store food that we grow in our garden, extra food that we can preserve, mostly dry goods. So I built it out of pile and we dug it all out by hand with shovels and it was it took us like a month to dig all this up, but we want to build two more. So we have a vent pipe in the back and then you vent out the front here. So you get the airflow going through it and it helps keep. You have drainage rock on the bottom, the pallets are on the side and then we use a viscous cover around it. It's like a moisture barrier before we covered it back up with all the dirt. It's been going for over a year now. It's our first one so it's kind of a prototype to see how it works. The next one I think we're going to go a little bit deeper. We'd like to have three of them here. It's like a little community of Hobbit house root cellars when you walk down to the creek. 
Yeah, this is one of the fun parts of our farm. So, this is one of the other ways that we produce food on our farm. Right now we have 29 laying hens and one rooster. We're planning on adding some meat chickens next year hopefully, but right now these are all our layers. So, we have two coops here with all their nests. So, in the back of one of our chicken coops, because our cats are indoor-outdoor, in the winter they really like to be out here with the chickens, so we build these little shelves for them that they can climb up on and then they have a cat door on this side and a cat door on the other side, so they'll be able to go in and out. We keep it warm throughout the winter with food and water and a lot of times this is where I find my cats hanging out. So they like to come out and watch the chickens. So, it's fun. So my advice or I guess words of wisdom if you want to live in a tiny house would be, try to see how much you can actually live without. I don't have a stove, I don't have a big fridge, I don't have an oven, and I'm happier now than I was when I had all of those things. What was really important for me is that I embraced that minimalist idea more and moved away from, oh, I need more storage in my house, I need more stuff in my house, I wanted less. I would like people to, you know, take a step back and maybe embrace that a little bit more as well and think about the fundamentals, what they really want out of this movement or lifestyle. So our tiny house is on Serenita's Tiny Living, which has a presence on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. We're partnering with the Tiny House Alliance USA to achieve the legalization of tiny houses by adopting global SM standards and modifications to building codes. I related to the wheels of their properties, which will make it easier to park them. I also have 13 books on Amazon that you can check out. Oh, it's Tribe Lacing Tiny, a guide to breaking free and trip blacking tiny tales, which is an ebook series. So you can check them all out and follow me and say hi. All the links will be in the description.